welcome to another episode of Boring History. My name is Angela and today we're going to be looking at another German folklore, the Ulfhocker. It's said that Ulfhockers are a type of korbot or goblin-like spirit that if traveling alone at night will come and jump up on your shoulder and slowly begin to crush you, stealing away your breath. You'll then be either left so traumatized from the experience that you can't function or you'll be dead. Alfhawkers like to lurk in a variety of places such as forests or near lakes and streams and sometimes they may even appear in your bedroom. But their favourite hideouts are said to be under bridges, places of execution like gallows, cemeteries or along the paths that were used to transport the body to the cemetery. These routes were called a Tortenweg or a death route I think. Alfhawkers prefer to hunt at night and if there's fog then that's even more perfect. They also prefer their victims to be slightly sleepy or inebriated. Stories featuring an Ulfhocker will usually proceed in the same or at least similar three stages. First, a traveller will be travelling or walking along a stream or a path or a wherever and slowly a Ulfhocker will start to accompany them. Some might call this stalking. The creature then slowly begins to grow into a supernatural size until eventually it jumps onto the back or the shoulder of the unsuspecting victim. The traveller is paralysed by fear and is usually overcome by the sheer weight of the creature on their back or shoulder. Usually they crushed it in. It's only later on in history as the folklore evolves that we hear of instances where the traveller escapes or the Ulfhocker is defeated. And as with all creatures of folklore, there are variations to its description. One of the books I was reading pointed out that it might have been a psychological influence that impacted the change in the Ulfhocker's description, meaning that as fear of the creature grew, so did its shape. For example, some sources describe the Ulfhocker as an extremely large black vampiric dog that walks on its hind legs and at night preys on lone travellers. Their favourite haunting place is at crossroads and if you happen to come across one, you're going to have a bad day because one of their favourite things to do is to rip out the throat of their victims. Perhaps with this version there's also a comparison to be made to a crossroad demon but without any of the perks. With this version of the Ulfhocker, it's also said that it can shapeshift to take on the form of other animals and on very rare occasions it can also take on a human appearance. These creatures can't be killed but they can be scared off by the ringing of church bells and, like any good vampire, they avoid the sun. Ulfhockers have also been described as bears, dogs, werewolves, witches and so on and so on. Alright, so now that we've got the basic outline of what is an Ulfhocker, let's hear a couple of stories as told by one Franz Weidemann who apparently in the 1920s came across some people who had had encounters with these unholy creatures. There was once a man who lived in a beautiful house by the entrance of a park. Picture one of those parks that you always see in those Jane Austen type movies where the gentle folks go for gentle carriage rides, relaxing strolls, that type of thing. Back to our man. Now this man was very well known in the area because he always wore this extremely bright and extravagant clothing. So peculiar was this man that he had caught the eye of an Ulfhocker who had slowly been stalking him across a number of days. Then one day when the man decided to go for a stroll around the pond at the park, the Ulfhocker took his chance and he leapt at him. The man could feel the demon creature clinging to his back but there was nothing he could do. The Ulfhocker grabbed him by the hair and began to drive him forward as he would a horse and took him for a ride all around the park. And only when the man could no longer walk from exhaustion did the Ulfhocker let him go. And whilst the man survived, the claw marks that were left on his shoulder by the creatures would leave scars that stayed with him for the rest of his life. Another story also involves a man who lived in a pretty house, some might call it a manor or an estate. This man, like our previous man, had also caught the eye of an Ulfhocker. And one day when this man went to bed, the Ulfhocker decided to take his chance. He slowly climbed up the man's bedpost and leapt at him, slowly crushing him as he slept. The man struggled and tried to turn to his side to push off the Ulfhocker, but the Ulfhocker wouldn't relent and kept sitting on his chest, slowly, slowly choking him. But eventually, this Ulfhocker also decided to let his victim go, but when he left, the man felt so exhausted from their struggle that it was as though he had been working some physically demanding job for the last however many years. Now, the last story in particular, I think we could probably link to somebody undergoing some form of sleep paralysis, maybe? Anyway, stories such as these also prompted people to want to try and put some defensive measures in place just in case an Ulfhocker decided to choose them as their next victim. For example, some people would place the feet of their beds in buckets of water to prevent the Ulfhocker from climbing up the bedpost. Which I think was or is maybe a prevention for bed bugs, but then it just ended up creating like a home for mosquitoes. And I think there might also be some other old wives tale about what buckets of water on your 
bed thingies do. Can't remember. Another Alf Hocker defence, in particular for the elderly, was to sleep with your legs crossed. Don't know why. And if you were travelling alone, it was said that you should carry with you some form of pebble thing that had a hole in the middle, and that this would help ward off all the evil spirits and demons and whatever else goes on in the night. Now, at this point of the video, I just want to give a quick disclaimer, because whilst I can read basic German, I'm nowhere near at an academic level, and I feel like that's where all the juicy details are going to be. But as with Corbots, which I try to explain in my video that I can link up here, the story regarding Ulf Hockers does change from time to time and place to place, so there are quite a few variations out there. For example, in Arnstadt, which is a smallish type town in Germany, it was said that an Ulf hocker like creature would swipe at the legs of all the drunkards as they left the inn. So the next time if you find yourself going out for a couple of drinks and then you happen to be stumbling around as you leave the pub or the club or whatever, just know that it's not because you've drunk too much. No. It's because the Ulf Hocker is swiping at your legs and that's what's making you stumble. And if you travel to North Thuringen or north of Turing, which is a state in Germany, there's an Ulf Hocker like creature which is called a Hock Ulf. And in other parts of Germany, creatures with similar characteristics are called a Pumpelz. Which why that name didn't take off, I have no idea. Now whilst we're on the topics of names, I think the English version of an Ulf Hocker or the English name for an Ulf Hocker is a leap upon, which makes sense because it's a creature that leaps upon you. The more literal translation would be an on sitter, with Ulf being on and Hocker or Hock being a word you can use for sit. However, if you were to put Ulf Hocker into Google Translate, the translation that comes up is a type of stool or something relating to a chair, because a Hocker is also a word that can be used for a type of chair. Which means that according to Google, this entire folklore is just about this stool that stalks you at night and just kind of rocks along on all four feet. Sound in itself would be terrifying. And then just as you couldn't take the rocking noise coming out of the dark depths of the forest anymore, this stool would just leap towards you, sit on your chest and slowly choke you to death. It's a brilliant variation of the story, don't you think? Almost as good as that movie about the truck that stalks and kills people. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. I've got a few references for you in the box down below, and if you know any stories regarding an Ulf Hocker, please feel free to share them in the comment section. Also, if you've made it this far, please subscribe, because I look forward to sharing even more boring history with you in the future.